Welcome to Miss Smith's Math Tutorials. I'm Miss Smith. In this video, we're going to be talking about solving rational equations. So notice what makes this different from when we were adding or subtracting or dividing or multiplying or any of that is that now we have an equal sign. So notice that equal sign. So in this case, we're going to be solving these and we're going to follow some steps to do it. So our first step is going to be to factor the denominators if possible. Our step two is going to be to find the lowest common denominator or the least common denominator, the LCD. Step three is going to be to determine any restrictions using that LCD. Step four is going to be to multiply all numerators by the LCD. Step five, we're going to cancel any common factors that we can. And then step six is to solve for X. So we've got 5 divided by 2x minus 2 equals 15 divided by x squared minus 1. This is a rational equation. We would want to say, are there any denominators that we can factor, like our step 1 says. Looking at this one, this is a 2x minus 2. So hopefully you're looking at that and thinking, yes, we can factor a GCF out of that expression. So we'll have 5 over 2x minus 2, my GCF would be... 2 and when I divide that out I'm just left with an x minus 1. And then over in here in my part 2 notice my denominator says x squared minus 1. That's what we call a difference of perfect squares. When we do difference of perfect squares we create our two parentheses sets and we take the square root of each term. So the square root of x squared is just x, square root of 1 is just 1, and then we throw a minus and a plus sign. So now that we factored the denominators, we want to move to step two. We want to find the LCD and we always want to note it up here. To find the LCD, we ask ourselves, what do the denominators have in common and what do they have different? So hopefully you're looking at this thinking that they have X minus one in common and different, they have x plus 1 and a 2. I like to write the 2 out front. I didn't give myself a ton of space there, but I like to write the 2 out front and then we have our x plus 1. So we, our LCD covers what do they have in common and what do they have different. Now in step 3, we want to kind of take a sidebar and determine any restrictions using that LCD. So I like to do that over here on the side. So this is our restrictions section. To find our restrictions, we go up to this LCD and we take each part of it and we set each part equal to 0. So we'll set 2 equal to 0, we'll set x minus 1 equal to 0, and then we'll set x plus 1 equal to 0. And then we would want to solve each of these little equations for x. So notice in this one, we don't have an x and two does not equal zero, right? So this one we ignore. Now for this x minus one, we'd want to add one to both sides to get x alone. And we'd end up with x equals one. So for this one, we'd want to subtract one from both sides and we'd end up with x equals negative one. So the way we write a restriction statement is I like to do a little star and I say that x cannot equal these things that we found through solving. So x cannot equal 1 or negative 1. And the reason that x cannot equal 1 or negative 1 is because if you were to plug in either one of those numbers for x throughout the problem and solve, you would end up with zero in the denominators. And you cannot have zero in the denominator. That would be undefined. Even if you tried to plug it in the calculator, it would tell you error cannot divide by zero. So it's good to just know up front that those are things x cannot equal. So step four says multiply all numerators by the LCD. So we're going back up here. We're gonna take this LCD and we're gonna multiply all numerators by 2 times x minus 1 times x plus 1. We're going to do that here and here. x minus 1, x plus 1. And then step 5 says cancel any common factors. Notice we have a 2 here 
and a two in that LCD. So these can go ahead and cancel. We also have an X minus one here and an X minus one here. So those can cancel. Now we can't cancel the X plus one. So we just need to rewrite five times X plus one. That's what we have remaining. Then we have our equal sign. And now let's do it to the other side as well. Let's cancel what we can. Notice I can cancel this X minus one, X minus one, and this X plus one, X plus one. And so I'm just left with 15 times two, which I could go ahead and say 15 times two is 30. And so now step six, we wanna solve for X. We need to distribute this five to both our terms. Five times X is five X. Five times one is a positive five equals 30. We'd want to subtract 5 from both sides. This is just basic algebra we're doing at this point. And we have 5x equals 30 minus 5, which is 25. Our final step to get x alone is to divide 5 on both sides. And we get x equals 25 divided by 5 is just 5. So it's important to note that we said right there that x could not be 1 or negative 1, and it was not, right? We got x equals 5. Okay, let's look at two more problems together. In this first one, we have 3 divided by x plus 2 minus 2 divided by x minus 3 equals 18 divided by x plus 2 x minus 3. In this one, we don't just have a rational equals a rational we have some subtraction going on here. But here's the thing, we follow the exact same steps that we did on the last. So our first step was factor any denominators if you can. I've got x plus two, can I factor that anymore? Nope, that's already in factored form. And I personally like to put parentheses around it. What about x minus three, can I factor that? Nope, that's already factored all the way. So I'll go ahead and put parentheses around it. And then in this final denominator, x plus two, x minus three, is there any factoring I can do there? And I know the temptation for a lot of students is, oh, let me foil that. No, we don't wanna do that. If you were to foil it, you're gonna end up with a quadratic trinomial, and then you just have to refactor it again. This is already in factored form. We wanna leave it like that. That's perfect. That's exactly how we want it. Okay, so now we'd move to our step two. Find the LCD. The LCD is what do the denominators have in common and what do they have different? This one and this one have X plus two, so we'll include that, so X plus two. We see that they have in common this X minus three, so we'll include that. What do they have different? Well, nothing, right? That covers all of them. X plus two, X minus three, X plus two, X minus three. So we've got everything covered with our stuff in common. So our next step is gonna be to note the restrictions. So I like to do that over here on the side just to quickly make a little restriction section. We take each part of our LCD, X plus two, and set it equal to zero, and X minus three and set it equal to zero. And then we solve each part for x. So in this one, we'd subtract two, and we'd get x equals negative two. And in this one, we'd add three, and we'd get x equals three. So our restriction statement is gonna be x cannot equal negative two or three. Making x equal to negative two or three would create an undefined situation where we are dividing by zero, we cannot have that. Back up here, remember we wanna multiply each of the numerators by the LCD. So we can do that just right up here. We wanna cancel what we can, x plus two, x plus two. All I'm left with is three times X minus three right there. In our next one, notice the X minus threes cancel and all I'm left with is a negative two. Be so careful there. That is a negative two. So negative two times X plus two. 
and we have our equals. Now in that last part, the x plus twos cancel and the x minus threes cancel. So all you have left is 18. So now our final step is we want to solve for x. So let's distribute the three and distribute the negative two. So that leaves us with three times x is three x. Three times negative three is negative nine. Negative two times x is negative two x. And negative two times two is negative four equals 18. We wanna combine our like terms. So three x minus two x is just one x. Negative nine minus four, that would give us a negative 13 equals 18. And we'd wanna add 13 to both sides. So we get x equals 18 plus 13 is gonna give us 31. We found that x is equal to 31. X cannot equal negative two or negative three, which it didn't, so we're good. Let's look at one more together. So remember we want to step one, factor any denominators if possible. So looking at this, I've got five times x plus two. Well, that's already factored. And then I've just got x plus two. So that's already factored. So I'm actually good to go with finding my LCD. What do these denominators have in common? And what do they have different? So hopefully you're thinking, well, they have in common x plus two, right? And you can put parentheses around that one. They have in common x plus two and they have different this little five. Our LCD is gonna be what they have different, the five, and what they have in common, the x plus two. Our next step is find any restrictions. So let's come over here and note our restrictions. So we set each part equal to zero. So we'll set the five equal to zero and the x plus two equal to zero. Now notice five does not equal zero. So we throw that one away. But for this one, we wanna subtract two from both sides and we get x cannot equal negative two. That's our restriction for this problem. Now we're ready to move on to our step four, which is multiply all numerators by the LCD. So that means I'm gonna multiply four by the LCD and 15 by the LCD. And we're gonna cancel what we can. So in this case, the fives cancel and the x plus twos cancel. So we're just left with negative four. And for this one, the x plus twos cancel and the five does not cancel. So we'd need to say, okay, what is 15 times five? And 15 times five is 75. Look at the situation that we have. Our x is completely canceled out, right? And we're just left with a negative four equals 75. So you would ask yourself, is that true? Does negative four equal 75? Is that a true statement? And hopefully you're thinking, uh, no. Negative four does not equal 75. So what that means is that this one is actually a no solution. So what it means when it's no solution is that x actually equaled negative two. However, we stated that x could not equal negative two, right? That that was a restriction, that that would not work because we would end up with an undefined solution. So this one, our answer, if you end up with a statement that is untrue, then that is a no solution. Okay, here's one for you guys to try. I will post the answer in the video description below. This has been Miss Smith's Math Tutorials.